Well guys, 2012 has come and gone and just like last year, I have decided to take a look at the previous year and do a little bit of a retrospective as I take a look at the best and worst movies I covered. So yeah guys, of course, um, I always like to start off a little bit positive, so it's time to take a look at the top five reaction and review movies of 2012. We kick off the countdown with a comedy from Canada that started off as a fake trailer in Grindhouse, at least when Grindhouse was showing in Canadian theaters. I am of course talking about Hobo with a Shotgun. Oh man, this movie guys, I really do, do have to say. Now, similar to most of the movies I cover in reaction and review, I was a little bit skeptical about this one when I first went in, and it floored me. I absolutely adored the writing. I really loved the effects. I loved the humor, the characters, the story. The only thing I didn't like was the ending. The ending seriously sucks, and it and the ending is made even more off-putting, and I did not mention this, but the fact that the, the fact that the song that plays over the closing credits was a song I heard as a kid when it was featured in a Canadian animated series called the called the Raccoons, I'm not kidding. They they took a song from that show, they use it, and they play it over the closing credits to this, which is just so fucking off putting. But shockingly, it kind of worked. At least it was a nice way of lightening of sort of lightening the mood a little bit after that really really dismal ending. So yeah, guys. This thing was absolutely amazing, and of course the countdown only gets better from here. Number four was uh, one of the few movies I have ever covered that was nominated for an Oscar. I usually seem to gravitate more, more towards shit that was nominated for Razzies, but this one was nominated for an Oscar. And, the, and, if, and it is the German classic Downfall. Now, I stated when I first reviewed this that this movie is just fantastic everything from writing to acting and just the very fact that they were able to make Adolf Hitler come off as sympathetic which shot which to me is still shocking as shit because I didn't think any human being could ever write a story especially a, a rather factual story that makes Adolf Hitler come off as anything less than history's greatest monster this honestly showed that he even though he was evil and disgusting and all this other shit, he was still human. He he still had his own personal foibles and all this other happy horse shit, and it really worked. And I still believe that this thing should have won the Oscar for best foreign language film the year the year it came out. I don't care what the fuck else was out there. I really don't think that any other film that that year, including English language films, could have topped this thing in just sheer fantastic badass awesomeness. I loved every moment of, of this movie. And uh, if you guys have not seen this one, in fact, hell, if you haven't seen any of the movies I'm showing off here in the in the top five, you really should should check them out. And this one here, I would well, of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna highly recommend all of them, but this one. That one actually kind of gets a little bit of a special special notice. Number three is a film from England, and uh, I didn't know what to... Well, again, as part of the premise of the show, I didn't know what to fully expect from it. The movie is Snatch, and um, I will say that this was, I believe, my very first exposure to any film directed by Guy, by Guy Ritchie. And, again, I was really, really surprised. I... I honestly just sort of thought it was going to be a stupid, pointless heist heist film. It wound up being absolutely hilarious from top to bottom. This movie is funny. It's witty. It's clever. The story and the story is just and the story is just chugging along at a at a fucking breakneck speed, and there isn't a single unfucking likable character in this film including the fucking villain you just wind up absolutely adoring him and i found out i found out later on and you can find these on youtube someone has taken clips of star wars and they took that character's dialogue and they put it in and they put it into scenes in, involving darth vader and it just makes those scenes even funnier i'm probably going to put a link to one of those in the in this in this video's description so that you guys can know exactly what the fuck i'm talking about snatch is 
a Snatch is a great, great movie. And well, yeah, if you guys ha haven't seen it, you really, really should. And speaking, of, I really should get this on Blu-ray at some point because I do know it's out there. Number two is a is a true Hollywood classic that took me years to finally watch, and when I got around to watching it, my God, was I ever happy. The movie is Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. The one thing I don't like is that lengthy fucking title. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, this right here is just Kubrick at his darkest comical, you know, style. This right here, guys, was an awesome movie, and it was punched up with fantastic casting, a very, very dark, dark, funny, funny story. I loved every moment of it. The ending, the ending, honestly, is probably one of the darkest things you will ever see in terms of comedies. And again, we have awesome acting. We have, we have Peter, we have, we have fucking Peter Sellers just going, just going nuts through multiple, you know, roles, and it works so well. And I do know that, that there are a few people who, like me, at least before I film the, uh, the, you know, reaction and review for this one, had never seen this film. Really, guys, you, you seriously should. This thing here is, this thing here is a piece of Hollywood history that nobody should ever fucking miss out on. It is absolutely fantastic. Now, I know what some of you are wondering. If Dr. Strangelove is number two, what the hell was the best movie I covered last year? Well, I'm going to give you a hint. It is the only movie I have ever reviewed in this series that made me cry. And I am talking, I was holding back tears while doing the review. Um, yeah, I'm talking, of course, about Johnny Got His Gun. Yeah, uh, and as you guys can see, I did, I did in fact buy it on DVD after I was done with the, with the fucking reaction and review, just as I said I was going to. This movie uh, is probably the finest example of a fucking anti-war movie ever made and I cannot recommend it highly enough if you guys have never seen this movie and I know a lot of people haven't you owe it to yourself to give this thing a watch it is just it is just such a compelling story the acting in it is not perfect but then again most movies aren't totally perfect when it comes to acting either but really guys this thing, this thing could not be killed by shitty acting from almost from almost the entire secondary cast. The writing was that strong, and you are going to be sucked into the story that quickly. This movie is probably one of my all-time favorites, all thanks to covering it for this series. And ever since I got it on DVD, shockingly, I still haven't given it a second watch. I may have to when I'm done filming this, just because, well... I really want to give this thing another fucking view. And plus the DVD also has the also has the music video for, you know, one and I did I, I did explain in the fucking in the fucking R and R on this one exactly why there is a music video for one and I'm talking about the I'm talking about the Metallica song one on here. I, I, I kind of explained the entire history of that in that in that video so now i can watch the movie and i can watch the music video i can just kick back i can have a grand old time and i can once more laugh at the awesomeness that is douchebag jesus so yeah guys this right here was the best movie i covered last year and frankly i'm i'm going to be ridiculously surprised if anything i cover this year is going to even match that or even last year's number one which was repo the the genetic opera now some people have been wondering when it comes to Johnny Got His Gun, this year's number one and last year's, which is Repo the the Genetic Opera, which it, had I have thought better about it, I would have probably had my Blu-ray over here so I could sort of show them like face-off sort of style. But if, if I really had to pick which which one is better, holy fuck, that seriously is a tough call. Uh, I'd probably have to give the edge to... Repo just simply just simply because of the you know stylistic awesomeness of that film. However, again, only movie in the history of reaction and review to make me fucking cry. So again, it's it it would be really tough to sort of to sort of square off last year's number one and this year's number one. But hey, you know what? 
the very fact, guys, that I was able to find five amazing movies that from last year. Now, mind you, I covered a lot of really good movies, guys, and it was difficult as shit to, first of all, whittle it down to five, and then be able to put them in some kind of an order that makes some level of sense. That was a challenge. Now, now if you guys want to stick around, tomorrow you are going to see the the other side of, the, of this coin as I delve into the worst pieces of shit I covered in 2012. Uh, un un unless, of course, you're catching this like a while after I fucking uploaded both of them, then you'll probably try to find that one and watch it like as soon as this thing's done. So, yeah, guys, stay tuned and you will soon see what the five worst movies were I covered last year. So, take care, guys. Peace.